The rhythm parts of this song are pretty straightforward, and I'm going to show you both positions with the capo in the fourth position using G chord family chords, as well as no capo using the B shape, which is not as, as hard as it looks, and you'll get some really cool sounds that will complement this higher sound, capo four, using the G chord family. So let's start here because it is uh, a little easier. Capo four, this puts us in the key of B, but we're using G. Uh, chord family chords. As far as your left hand is concerned, it's really easy. You're just playing G, C2, and G over E. This is your minor chord. It's kind of an E minor substitute chord. One thing you can do, there's a bit of a droning sound as the, as the song starts. You can use your middle finger to mute out the fifth string. Same with your C2. And I'm just again muting the string below the root note. You won't do this for G over E. So it's just a stylistic thing. You don't have to do that, but it's just an option you can you can try out. That's all there is to it with your left hand, real easy, just three chords. Your right hand, um, there's a little more to it um, as far as, as the strum pattern and all of that sort of thing we'll get into, but let's start with the strum pattern. Um, any of the strum patterns you learned in the Essential Series or Beginner Series will work uh, because this song is in 4-4 time. So that's kind of the 16th note groove where your hand is just uh, in a 16th pattern. Um, but I'll show you kind of a specific strum pattern you can use with this song that might help you out as far as knowing when to accent the downs and the ups in that groove. So get your hand in position for a G and we'll try uh, this strum pattern out. You'll strum down twice and then come right up. So down twice and then right up. You'll immediately come down again, but this time three times down and one time up. So one, two, three immediately up, pull up after the third. So I'll show you both of those, two then up, three then up. And then for the last part of your strum pattern, it's the same thing, three times and then up. And that's your whole strum pattern. So it sounds like this, two then three then three. Do it again a little slower. your hand is in position on the up to start right back and do the same thing. So two and then up, three then up, three then up. Here's full speed. Again. Now notice as I'm going to play it again, I want you to watch my right hand. It's going to get in this kind of groove what I call a 16th groove. So when you accent, when you play your downs and your ups, when you're supposed to, your hand is just in this motion. And when your hand gets in that motion, then it'll become second nature and you don't even have to think about it. You can think about what you're singing or think about the chords you're playing uh, as you get used to the strum pattern. So that's the goal. You do it enough to where it feels natural. You'll notice as I'm strumming, I'm focusing on the lower strings to give that kind of droning sound as the song builds and progresses into the chorus um, where all the instruments start coming in. You'll, you'll broaden out your strum to the higher, brighter, happier sounding chord. So you'll hear those sounds um, just add to the chord, but it's good to start a little small. Anytime you see a diamond on the chart, that just means to strum it once and let it ring for the full four beats of the measure. One, two, three, four. 
four. So really that's all there is. That's the main part of what there is to this. There's one more thing you can add if you really want to um, add in some dynamics and that's called palm muting. Um, this can be difficult for some people, so don't get worried if it if it's um, you know it's just not working for you. Um, I explain this more in a lesson. You can uh, search palm muting on my site, and you'll see a full lesson on it. But you kind of use this fleshy part of your hand and relax it on the strings. Um, and the trick here is not too hard, not too soft. If you do it too hard, you can't hear anything. If you do it too soft, there's no point. So you're just kind of resting that part of your hand on the strings as you play and you get this sound. Kind of a percussive, almost drum-like sound and your, your tones, your notes are kind of there and they die. That's why it's called a, a muting sound. It's a muted sound. So just a slightly different sound there. So that's all that's happening in this position. Let's jump to the B position. I really like the sound of these chords. Um, everything that we just did with your right hand, the strum pattern, the palm muting applies here. So you're already set to go with that. Um, in this position, it's just a matter of which chords you play and which positions you play. You almost want to think of this as a power chord, meaning you're not going to strum every single string equally. You're kind of focusing on the fifth string, fourth, and the third. And then I'm just um, playing that power chord position. So pointer is on the second fret um, on the fifth string, and then you'll skip a fret, and then ring finger is on the fourth fret. Pinky's right below it. Same fret. And so here, same thing for your one chord. This is your B. And then when you have an E chord, this is my favorite sound, you're adding that real low E to the chord. So it's kind of like a B over E, but it works for your four chord or your E. Your six chord, six minor chord, um, which will actually be a, a G sharp minor technically, but what we'll do here is we'll kind of cheat it, and then you'll add your middle finger on the same fret as these two guys on the fourth, mute out the fifth string, really cool sounding chord, it's like a B chord over a G sharp, back to that E. As you're playing your one chord or your B, you can just mute out that top one when you don't need it with your middle. Just rest it. And one more thing you can do with this, uh, that E sounding chord, you can also take this, this same position and slide it up to seven and nine. You'll get a high, uh, this is an open E chord really. We'll just get some higher notes in there. I personally like the B shape with the E on top a little better, um, but you're certainly welcome to slide up to that E position to get some higher notes and a different sound. So that's all that's involved with the rhythm parts of the song Wonder.